This video is sponsored by Skillshare. If you're any sort of creator, you've probably at some point felt like you're underqualified compared to your peers. Maybe you feel insecure and inadequate, like you're just a little kid who somehow managed to sneak in with all the adults, and they're going to realize you're just a fraud any day now. This is what's known as imposter syndrome. It's where, even if you're widely regarded as a person with great skill, you feel like you'll never be good enough. Even if you're technically skilled, you feel like you and your art is awful. This can lead to a constant feeling of inadequacy, almost like a form of anxiety that's always looming over you. This is something that affects a lot of skilled artists, even the ones we all look up to. Feelings of inadequacy, especially if you grew up with hypercritical parents or peers, or if you're a minority in your field, is pretty common. And it's not a cry for attention, it's not false relatability, it's simply a reality that a lot of us deal with, and it's really draining. Personally, I don't know what it is to feel satisfied in my own work. No matter how many nice comments I get, no matter how many goals I achieve, this feeling doesn't go away. No matter what level I get to, I still look at my own work with disappointment. No matter who I work with or how much money I make, I still feel like this is all just a fluke. Sometimes I try to convince myself that I'm just a perfectionist with high goals for myself, and while that is partly true, that perfectionism way too often ebbs over into self-destructive loathing and negative thought spirals. It's never enough, and no matter how hard I work, I can never seem to actually like my own work. I have this really stupid but legitimate fear that I'm going to work with a big client one day, and I'm going to fuck it up, and upon realizing how much I actually suck, they're going to spread the word to everyone else, and I'll just never work as an artist again. When I tell people this, they kind of just laugh and say, oh, but you know you're actually good, right? And no, I don't actually know that. So talking about imposter syndrome is hard. Talking about how to not hate your own art is hard. Because one, I don't want this to come off as a cry for attention or for help. Uh, I, I don't need help because I still love art and I still love my job and I still have fun with it. Sometimes. I just have a hard time believing in myself and my work. And two, because I don't have a clear-cut solution and I don't really think anyone does. That's a sad truth, but it is what it is. I don't have the answer. This is a really complicated thing to deal with and it's also completely different from person to person. But as a working professional, I do have some tips that have helped me deal with it in a healthy way. If you're struggling with this so severely it's limiting you in your daily life, I urge you to see a professional therapist though. I'm just some artist with a YouTube channel, so take my advice with a grain of salt and if you're really struggling with this, seek professional help. Write down feelings about your work. Hating our art and feeling resistance when it comes to creating can often be caused by subconscious thoughts that we're not even aware of. So get out a notebook and write what you're feeling. Why do you hate your work so much? What are you afraid of? Why are you so scared others will think you're a fraud? Write without judging yourself, without expectations, and you might not only feel a lot of pent-up stress leave you, but also discover things about yourself you had never considered before. Write down what you should work on and what your strengths are. This will help you look at the situation more objectively and can help lessen some of those irrational negative thoughts. Compare yourself to the old you, not your peers. Imposter syndrome is hugely something that can occur because we put way too much focus on others and how we're viewed by them and on how we compare to them. If one of your peers makes something you think is way beyond your own skill level, try to celebrate that and let it motivate you instead of comparing yourself to them. Art is really fun, so when someone creates something cool, that's something to be celebrated. The only person you should really be comparing yourself to is the old you. Look at how far you've come and you'll feel better about yourself. If you can, set aside some time to redraw old work at least once a year to remind yourself that you're always moving forwards. Never stop learning. This taps into the previous point as well. If you're always improving and learning new skills, evolving as a creator, keeping feelings of inadequacy at bay becomes easier. 
If you made a drawing you think sucks, then you can look at a drawing you did six months ago and recognize improvement. Not to mention that learning new things also lets you experiment more and have fun with the new process. It keeps things from growing stale and keeps you moving towards your goals with momentum. Always do your best. Trying your hardest is something to take pride in, even if you end up with a product you don't necessarily like. If I end up with a drawing I hate, but I know in my heart that I did the very best I could and had fun with the process, I will usually feel pretty good. If I know I took shortcuts, was lazy, and managed my time poorly, the road to spiraling is much shorter. When we challenge ourselves and have a good process, there's a lot of pride and joy to be taken in that itself. You may not be happy with your final painting, but you can be pleased with the fact you did everything you could. And honestly, if you really do push yourself, you might just surprise yourself and create something amazing. Let yourself do bad art. When I do these left-handed drawings, I don't care if they end up looking wonky. I don't really expect anything great at all, so when they turn out imperfect, I don't mind. I think a lot of our insecurity towards our own work comes from expecting something absolutely amazing and putting a lot of pressure on ourselves to achieve that. This is somewhat necessary. If we are professionals, there is a certain expectation we have no choice but to fulfill, but that's why it's important to give yourself room to create with no expectations. Have a secret sketchbook, promise yourself you'll never post anything from it on Instagram, and tell yourself you don't have to show anyone its contents. Let go of the need to create something that's pretty or accurate, and just draw. It'll feel incredibly freeing and help you enjoy the process once again. At the end of it all, art should be about enjoyment and not perfection. View your own work objectively. One of the big reasons we often look at our own paintings with disapproval is that we've already been staring at it for 10 hours while working on it. We know every single breaststroke, we know exactly which area that we kind of neglected, and we are aware of every single thing that looks slightly off. So to us, it can look like a big, ugly mess. But for a person seeing it for the first time, the experience is completely different. They'll probably be blown away by this thing they've never seen before, then take it in for a few moments and move on with their day. Try to put yourself in their shoes and take in the overall impression of the artwork instead of worrying about that tiny area you know looks a bit weird. It's probably not at all as bad as you think. If the client is happy, you've done your job well. At the end of the day, our job as professional artists is to provide our clients with a product that serves whatever purpose they need filled. If your work is accurate to the brief you were given, you did your best with what you had, and if the client approves it by the end of it all, you did a good job. Like 90% of the time, I myself am incredibly unhappy with the work I do, and sometimes I even want to give the client a refund just because I feel awful for what I gave them. But then I need to remind myself that they're happy with it. They paid for a service, I executed that service professionally, and at the end of it, they were happy with what I did. It doesn't matter that I, in my subjective perfectionism, dislike the product. If the client is happy with me, I should be happy with me. All that being said, imposter syndrome is a complicated issue, and I don't know how to fix it. I'm sure that's not what you want to hear from a person who has quote-unquote figured it out, but that's the truth. I don't know how we can stop hating our art as experienced professionals because no matter what I do or how I change my mindset, I still think my own art sucks a lot of the time. I still love art, I still love my job, and what I've discussed in this video certainly helps make me feel better, but it's no immediate cure. I want to stress that this is not me saying you should lie down and be okay with your unhealthy thoughts. This is me saying this is a whole thing that takes work to get over. Feeling irrationally bad about yourself at all times is not an even remotely positive thing. But thinking that just being positive and enjoying yourself will fix it, it is naive. If you hate your own art, you're not an asshole who's fishing for compliments. You're just a person who has some deep-seated insecurities you need to figure out. Your feelings, while unhealthy, are valid. What I encourage you to do is to figure out what helps for you. For me, along with what I just mentioned, meditation, exercise, and taking the time 
to really look at things objectively help. For you, it might be something completely different. Look within yourself and you'll eventually find little things that help you find your way back to reality. Because the reality is, most likely, you are way more qualified than you think. Your art probably is not at all as bad as you think. But seeing ourselves and what we create objectively is a notoriously difficult task. A huge, huge thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. One of the most efficient ways of keeping imposter syndrome at bay is improving ourselves by learning new things and sharpening our already existing skill sets. Skillshare is the perfect place for that, with thousands of classes in literally anything. From painting, to productivity, to business, to juggling, you can pretty much learn anything you want at any time. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month, which is not only super affordable, but also cheaper than most other services of its kind. Right now, the first 500 people who click the link in the description will get a two-month subscription completely free of charge. So go try it out if you're interested.